Okay. If a vice chancellor can be removed like a clerk in a university, then it means that the job security of our members in the Dutch university is threatened. Because okay. if somebody in higher authority wakes up on the wrong side of his bed, he can ask anybody to be sacked from the university. Over the last seven days, many of us must have heard about the removal or sacking, as the case may be, of the Unilag Vice Chancellor, Professor Oluwatoin Ogundikpe. This news, however, comes to us as a bolt from the blue, but unfolding events and surrounding crisis, which made it clear that the pro Chancellor. Professor Wale Babalakin through the governing council are taking um, this um, decision on alleged financial misappropriation of uh, by, by the vice chancellor and the scenario begs curiosity of listening years and uh, attention of the general public. So, welcome Dr. Dr. Ashiro. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, it is indeed a pleasure to have you on the show today. And first off, I want to acknowledge and commend your works within and outside the institution of learning. Uh, you are indeed a scholar in politics, um, governance, and a true advocate for better democracy. It shows that you are an embodiment of integrity in the field of politics. And I must say, you know, well done at all you do. Thank you. Uh, thank you. All right. Thank you so much. So, so let's just go straight to the business of the day. I know. University of Lagos is a prestigious university as far as Nigeria or Africa and world is concerned. Unila currently ranks fourth in Nigeria in, in Nigeria according to Center for World University Rankings and um, eighth in Africa. It is rocking. Uh, will I say? Yeah, you know, it, it is unfortunate that we are having this this kind of crisis uh, um, rocking the school at the moment. What is the current situation like at the moment? The, the current situation mm. is that we have a poor chancellor who has refused to follow the law mm. and. Um, follow procedures and time-tested tradition of the university system. Uh, a university is not a private estate. And that is why there are laws, there are rules, there are regulations that must be followed in conducting the business of a university. Okay. In our own case, Dr. Wadi Bola who is the co chancellor of the university. Okay. Have petitioned unknown law regulating university and had created a crisis in the University of Lagos mm -hmm. by illegally removing the vice chancellor of the university and also refusing to follow the law in the appointment of an acting vice chancellor should the need arise. So, as I speak with you, we have somebody who is parading himself as an acting vice chancellor in the university, whereas we have a substantive vice chancellor who is the one that has been validly appointed uh, to run the affairs of the university. That is the situation in human life at the moment. Okay. All right, so listening to you, I can't help but ask because I know that my own audience will be curious about this because I know that um, the public expects a more informed approach in terms of remedy to the saga before extending to a sack. So my question is, has there been prior sitting of the Senate committee or the governing council to address these issues prior to the sacking? Well, uh, there have been several meetings, several attempts Okay. Uh, this recklessness on the part of the pro chancellor didn't start today. It started as soon as he assumed office as our pro chancellor. Oh, really? Uh, to make the point very clear, each time Senate sends recommendations to council as provided by law, mm -hmm. the pro chancellor will unilaterally and flagrantly disregard such recommendations. Interesting. Uh, on, 
And that was also what led to the unfortunate cancellation of the 51st convocation ceremony mm -hmm. of the University of Lagos. Uh, the removal of the vice chancellor is in following the tradition of the post chancellor of his desire not to want to obey the law, not to broker any opposition mm -hmm. from any segment of this, of the university. Mm -hmm. Whereas a university thrives on logical disputation, uh, critical skepticism, and the advancement of knowledge is by pointing everything until the truth is unveiled. In this case, we have a post chancellor who wants to be a law unto himself. And the university community is challenging this autocracy, this tyranny, and this authoritarianism that the post chancellor has voiced on the university. Okay. All right, so listening to you, I can't help but ask, you know, the sacked vice chancellor says that the removal was a um, mischievous disinformation as the extant, I mean, the existing provisions of the law were not compiled or compelled with by the, can by the council. So what exactly are the laws and the guidelines set by the governing council to address such alleged misconduct? Thank you very much. The, the law provides that uh, when allegations of gross misconduct, uh, financial abuse, and all that are received against the vice chancellor, hmm. the council will write officially to the vice chancellor okay. informing him of the various allegations. Hmm. Now, the council will now set up a joint committee of Senate and council. According to the law, three members who are not members of Senate or council, one of them will be the chairman of the committee, mm. and two members of Senate, who will then be saddled with investigating all the allegations. And send a report back to the council. Council will now deliberate on this report and decide whether in the wisdom of council, the pro-chancellor deserves to either be suspended or removed or impose other disciplinary actions on him as council may decide. That is the provision of the law. In this case, the pro-chancellor in, with no regard for the provisions of the law from the procedures that are established by law, he called an emergency meeting where the item was not even stated for agenda and relying on the fraudulent composition of the government council. For example, it may interest you to know that one member in that government council is a partner and a worker in Wale Babalaki and Co. Chambers. Mm. Up till now, he has not been able to deny that, that allegation. Mm. He has not been able to come clean to tell Nigerians how it came about that Dr. Bari Adalanebe, who works in Babalaki and Co. Timber, is also a member of the Governing Council of the University of Lagos. Mm. Not only that, that Bayo Adara Lebe is from a Kitty State, but he was fraudulently smuggled into the Council of the University of Lagos mm. on the slope of Rida State. Even the pro chancellor himself is a non indigenous of Oshun State from Baga, but today he sits on our governing council as a representative of a Kitty State. How can such an illegally constituted council now see in judgment without thorough investigation, without following the proper procedure, claim to have removed a validly appointed vice chancellor that the pro chancellor himself presided over his appointment as vice chancellor in the university? Mm. So, certainly, what the pro chancellor is doing is a grand attempt. 
to discredit public university education in Nigeria with a view to buying them over. And that is why we are calling on men, all men of goodwill to intervene in this matter in the interest of what is left of public higher education in Nigeria, especially the university. All right. And that, law, that law also provides that should there be a vacancy in the office of the vice chancellor, council will appoint an active vice chancellor on the recommendations of Senate. Our pro chancellor should tell the world which day he got recommendation to appoint the person that is presently parading himself as acting vice chancellor in the university. All right. Thank you so much for that. It's obvious by the response you just gave that there are a lot of people benefited from one side of the of the issue at hand. Uh, but quickly, before I ask you another question, I think I want to quickly um, ask my audience to please call our phone lines um, to contribute to the topic at hand. And if you have any comment or any queries and all, it is 0700-923-923. Again, 0700-923-923 is the number to call. And you can send us a WhatsApp message on 817 6193. Sir, you know, listening to you and some of the research that I, I, I made before uh, being in the studio today, I, I, I want to quote to you. You said, uh, you, you, sir, Dr. Dele Ashiro, described the situation as a pro chancellor having a vested interest. How can we substantial this claim? Uh, well, uh, at several meetings of our government council before this crisis, mm. the pro chancellor tried critically to take over the chairmanship of the tenders board. Mm. Indeed, it took the council to write a letter to the Bureau of Public Procurement to determine who, by law, is supposed to chair the tenders board in a university. Mm. Not only that, we were told that at several council meetings, mm. there were attempts to send few portions of the University of Lagos Land mm. for the personal acquisition of our state chancellor and some of his colleagues. Mm. Not only that, there has been proposals to take over the guest houses of the university. He claimed that he wanted to destroy the guest houses and rebuild it in private public partnership scheme, which members of the university community resisted. It is not, it's his present behavior is not unconnected with his failed attempt and, his, and the resistance of the university community in allowing him to have some pie in the assets of the university. Mm -hmm. Indeed, it is important to let you know that on several occasions, we have had to appeal to him to allow this to reign the alumni association Hmm. Virtually all stakeholders in the university have appealed to the post chancellor, but he will not appeal. He goes about telling the world that he has not collected a dime from Unilag. He has been spending his personal money. Yes, he has been spending his personal money. All right, please kindly hold your, hold your thoughts, sir. Hello, we have a caller on the line. Hello, what's your name and where are you calling from, please? Conclude that it is the failure oh, of his sir. ambition to have a larger pie of this asset that have brought us to this situation that we are to do. All right. Thank you so much. You know, listening to you, we had a call on the line earlier, uh, but listening to you, one of the strong arguments put uh, forth against Professor Ogundikpe is financial recklessness. And according to pro-Chancellor uh, Professor Ogundikpe, they said he spent uh, 49 million renovating his residence without approvals. He also gave... 41 um, millionaire to the bossa to renovate his premises. How true are these allegations? Well, that is the reason why we are saying that these allegations should be, should be investigated okay. so that we can be sure that the allegations are true mm. in the face of the law. An accused is presumed innocent until he's proven Proving guilty. guilty. Absolutely. Yes. The poor chancellor has been saying this. This is not the first time he's saying it. He said it in 2017. He said it in 2018. Hello, Hello sir. He can you please it. can you please hold your thoughts? We have a call on the line. What's your name and where are you calling from, please? 
Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you. Please go ahead. We can hear you. Okay, so my, I don't know if I am. Hello, can you hear me? Please go ahead. What's the name? What's the name? Oh, we lost that. Yeah, go ahead, sir. Yeah, you mean I should go ahead? Yes, please. So there are an accused is presumed innocent mm -hmm. until it's proven guilty. Okay. I am not in a position to say whether Ogumeka is guilty or not guilty because I'm not privy to the report that the Port Chancellor is relying upon. That's why we said investigate this matter. All right. If you are sure of all of this part, take him to due process. Right. And if he is guilty, you discipline him according to the law. Thank you so much on that. What's your name and where you call you from? We have a call on the line. Yes, this is one came out of from Moshodi right now. Okay, what's your contribution for the topic today, Atan? No, I want to ask a question. Please go ahead. I don't know. I, I, I just tuned in, but I, I think it's a discussion about uh, about uh, the alleged uh, uh, misappropriation of funds by the former vice president. Yes, of yes, yes, right? yes, yes. Go ahead, please. Okay, so my, what's your question? My question is, I, 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 I don't know if your guest is listening. It's all yes, we can hear you. Okay, so, has, has there been any time, you know, maybe opportunity has been availed to this, uh, this man in question for him to come and answer probably to, you know, answer for himself whether the, the allegations labeled against him are true or not. So I just, I just want to answer that question. All right, I thank you. Yeah. Opportunity for him to come. All right, thank you so yeah. much. There has not been there has not been any opportunity. Hmm. All right. All right. So, um, sir, um, I, I I know that um, obviously your submission clearly shows that you belong to the fraction that is not in support of the pro chancellor's action and integral stakeholders like yourself with the authority attached to your office. So, do you think there is a feasible um, uh, resolution to cite or will uh, will that this impasse could um, uh, could continue to a legal route is taken? No, I think that uh, what the law says is that in situations like this, yes, the 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 agreed party mm. can appeal to the visitor to the university. Mm. So we are expecting the visitor to the university, who is the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, mm. President Muhammadu Buhari, mm -hmm. to the Honorable Minister of Education, to intervene in the matter in the interest of the rule of law in the interest of justice and in the interest of what is left of the university system in Nigeria. All right. But let me correct a, 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 an impression. Yeah. I do not belong to any fashion. Okay. Our union is neutral in this matter. Okay. What we are only trying to say is that the very moment an organization does not work by its laws, what we have or what we are going to have is anarchy. Okay. If a vice chancellor can be removed like a clerk in a university, then it means that the job security of our members and every other stakeholder in the Dutch university is threatened. Okay. Because if somebody in higher authority wakes up on the wrong side of his bed, he can ask anybody to be sacked from the university. I agree with and you, sir. Then, the society will now be might is right. That should not be allowed to happen in a university like University of New York. All right. Thank you for that submission. And this might be my last question to you because of time. I will appreciate if you can answer quickly. You know, you also advocated for restructuring of um, our educational system. How well has this advice been taken by the government and in what dimension or shape should the restructuring um, take place, if I may ask? Well, the problem we actually have with the educational, the educational system is that uh, government is paying only merely service to the education of its people. Whereas, it is the duty of government to do so. In order to structure the Nigerian educational system, 
in order to make it developmental oriented, the first is that the philosophy of education in Nigeria must be reviewed so that education becomes more functional. It is not by being able to speak English that one is educated. Yeah. Education is a, one, is a whole rounded process of learning that will impact on individuals and their society. In order to be able to do this, government must increase funding to education mm. and take care of the welfare of those who teach the education sector. In societies that are making progress, teachers are the most paid. It is shocking that in Nigeria, the highest paid professor in Nigeria today would, wouldn't earn more than 420,000 naira in a month. Mm. A society that treats is teachers like that certainly cannot make progress. Thank you so much, Dr. Ashiru, for that submission. May your endeavors in the path of truth and justice in the ongoing crisis yield to success. We appreciate you honoring our invites and thank you so much again for sharing your part of the evening with us. We will go on a quick break and return after um, after a word from our sponsors. Do not touch that doubt. This is Real Talk with Kike.